بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم now let's get into the section where we will try to compare the policy based vpns and the routing based vpns now there are some vpns what we have configured already like gre or the dm vpn or the flex vpns we will be covering up in the later on sections in the advanced sections over there so they are typically a kind of routing based vpns we call them as because we will be setting up a tunnel interfaces and these tunnels can be point to point or point to multi point as we discussed uh, when we get into dm vpn or flex vpns we we can support point to multi point vpns as well and these tunnels will decide all the traffic will go through these tunnels so we call these vpns as a routing based vpns a simple gre if you remember gre or static vti even a similar kind of thing whereas the other vpn called a policy based vpns where you have a device it can be a router or asa because this supports both on the routers as well as on the asas whereas this only supports on the routers whereas here we will be configuring some acl if you remember we if you are applying an ipsec vpn the first vpn what we covered with ipsec we have to create an acl that will be defined as your interesting traffic and that is going to tell what traffic should be applied with ipsec and what traffic should not apply the ipsec so we are specifically defining some policy in the form of acl and that acl is going to tell what traffic should be encrypted and which traffic should not be encrypted so we call them as policy vpn so remember policy and acl those things policy based vpns and the routing like tunnel we build and we configured some routing we call them as routing based vpns so if you try to compare the differences between them like the first main difference is in the case of policy based vpns when it, if i want to send a traffic from one dot network to two dot network we will be configuring an acl and that acl is going to tell what will be my interesting traffic and then under that we set the peer the remote ip and then we also tell the transform set and then we create a crypto map and then we apply it on the interface that's how the configuration goes on that so the acl will decide what traffic will be passed through the vpn and which traffic will be applied with ipsec but whereas in the case of routing based vpns we will be creating a logical tunnel tunnel 1 2 now there are two interfaces one interface is s1 by 0 the physical interface which goes to the internet and there is one logical interface called tunnel even though you know it still goes through the physical interface only but there is a logical separation so any traffic going through this tunnel if i apply ipsec over the tunnel or on the tunnel interface there is a separation already so all the traffic going through the tunnel is automatically encrypted and any traffic which is not using the tunnel is not encrypted so there is a clear separation of the traffic which needs to be encrypted which needs not to be encrypted because the routing or the tunnel interface will decide because the routing protocol will tell which interface to use and if it says go via tunnel interface means automatically it will apply the ipsec and if it says go via s1 by 0 means it will not apply the ipsec automatically so there is a clear separation but whereas here there is no tunnel interface we use here which means everything goes on the same interface so we require an acl to separate that so this is the main difference between these two vpns the routing based and the policy vpns So again, the policy VPNs are something we use in our normal IPsec VPNs, which we have already configured in the basic section. Also, in the remote VPNs, also we need to define those things. Probably in the remote VPN as well, we use. 
Whereas the routing VPNs we use in GRE, DM VPN, even the Flex VPN now, the static VTI, dynamic VTI, they all come under the routing based VPNs where we create one kind of logical tunnel interfaces, which is going to connect between them. Now, next thing, if you compare this policy VPNs, routing based VPNs or tunnel based VPNs, these are normal IPsec VPNs. So these are supported on routers as well as on the ASs as well as in other vendors. So you have support for that. But whereas these tunnel-based VPNs, they are supported with Cisco devices. So interoperability depends on the vendors. Some vendors may interoperate based on this, may not, it depends. But mainly the Cisco IOS devices supports this and there's no ASA or firewall support or firepower device. There's no support for Cisco firewalls for the tunnels because the fire 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 uh, the firewalls are not uh, really designed for the tunnels and all because tunnels are mostly based on the WAN connections and you generally have the routers dedicated for that and that's the reason this feature is not supported there. So with IPsec we use IPsec natively, but here we use IPsec with GRE or the VTY, like you can use native IPsec or the GRE will be used. You, you use some combinations or over DM VPN we use, we apply IPsec. So there's no direct IPsec configuration kind of thing. We apply it over the tunnel interfaces based on the GRE or the DM VPN. Now, another difference is the NAT. Now the NAT will be an issue because uh, in the case of policy-based VPNs, we write an ACL that if the traffic is coming from this source, if it is going to this destination, that is my interesting traffic. And we need to apply the IPsec for that. But let's say if you apply the NAT on this and this source address changes to a public IP, then again, this will break your IPsec. So for that, you need to add a NAT exemption rule. Again, that's something you generally see in the NAT, NAT section with IPsec, where you need to configure some NAT exemption rules to tell that don't translate this source and this destination. Means if the traffic is going from uh, this source to this destination, we need to tell in the NAT rules that don't translate them. That's again the, the, the problem here. But whereas here, there is no need to do anything because clearly there is a separation. We have a tunnel interface and we have a physical interface. So you apply the NAT on this interface, not on the tunnel interface. Even though physically it goes here, there is a logical separation already. So you don't need to configure any NAT exemption rules because there is a separation of the interfaces logically. So no need to, even if you configure NAT, that will not impact your uh, tunnels or impact your traffic. But whereas in the policy VPNs, as I said, NAT will impact your uh, traffic. So you need to add some additional configurations to prevent that. We call this as a NAT exemption rules. Other options, uh, other options like routing protocol support is not here. If I configure IPsec VPN, IPsec VPN provide end-to-end -end reachability based on the ACL and based on the crypto map, we configure the peer. So you cannot pass any of the routing protocol traffic on the top of a normal IPsec. But if I'm using routing based VPNs like static VTI or any, any tunnel based VPNs, you can configure routing protocols on the top of it to provide end-to-end -end reachability. Again, they don't support multicast traffic, whereas it supports multicast as well. Uh, even any non-IP protocols are not supported here. You can also run any non-IP protocols like IPX, IP talk protocols. Again, tunnel-based VPN is more simplified way to do, but policy-based VPNs are more complex because as I said, you have to write an ACL, you have to write NAT exemption rules. Uh, these are all the things and Again, if you have multiple endpoints, it really makes more and more difficult for you to configure policy-based VPNs. 
And also, if you are applying quality of service, there are very limited quality of service features applicable over there. But whereas in the case of routing based VPNs, we use tunnel interfaces. So there is a separation of interfaces which makes uh, quality of service or any other features uh, fully supported on the routing based VPNs. So most of the time we prefer to go with routing based VPNs uh, except firewalls. If you are using firewalls, you may need to go with policy based VPNs. But in terms of IOS, we always prefer to go with routing based VPNs because of the benefits we get uh, here. You can see there are plenty of differences as well as the advantages we get compared to the normal IPsec VPNs.